Hello world, welcome back to another Pico CTF 2022 ride up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the binary exploitation challenge, Rock Poop, worth 300 points. Let's get into it. What's Rob? Can you exploit the following program to get the flag? Download source. Okay, so ROP is just return-oriented programming, and so that's just programming that's revolved around return statements, essentially. So let's go ahead and crack open the source code, which I have, of course, already downloaded for us. So if you look right here, we indeed have a get function being called, which means we do need to overflow to an extent, right? But you'll notice there's no flag.txt this time. And that's because if you look at the prompt, how strong is your rot food? Snatch the shell from my hand, grasshopper. It wants us to get a shell on the server. And then we'll be able to run commands and cat the flag out that way. So we need to basically build a bunch of return statements that'll take us to the shell rot gadget because every gadget has a return statement associated with it. And if we can return to the right executable per se, as such as slash bin slash sh or slash bin slash bash, then we can pop a shell. So why don't we go ahead and get started on all that? We'll come over to our Kali machine here. And as you can see, I've already downloaded the executable as well. We'll run file on it. Okay, so this is a 32-bit executable. So let's start by, of course, figuring out what our overflow is, what our overflow offset is. So we'll do GB dot slash bone, and then we'll do pattern create a hundred should be fine. Let's copy that. And then we'll do run, paste that in. And there we go. We got an offset right here in EIP. It was overflowed successfully. So we'll just take our address right here and we'll do pattern offset and then our address. 28. So the number of A's that we're going to use to pad it will be 28. Keep that in mind. We'll go ahead and exit out of GDB Peta and let's clear. So now we need to build a ROP chain in order to get to the, the shell executable we want to get to. Well, there's an easy way to do this. We can use this tool called ROP Gadget and I'll do TAC H so we can see what it does. ROP Gadget lets you search your gadgets on a binary. It supports several file formats and architectures and uses the capstone disassembler for the search engine. Okay, so in these examples down here, we can see that we can build this ROP chain or we can see how to build this ROP chain. So let's do ROP Gadget. And then we wanna, of course, load our binary. And then we want to do ROP chain, I think, like that. Is that it? I think that's it. It's not an alphabetical order. There it is, yeah. Enable ROP chain, yeah. So ROP chain, and then we wanna also exclude new lines and null bytes because that will mess up our chains. So if we, if we don't exclude those, then it'll just break and it won't build our chain for us. So let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. All right, so if we scroll up a little bit in step five, we actually have a ROP chain and it actually makes the whole program for us. So we'll go ahead and grab all of that. Ugh, there we go. We'll copy that. Now let's build our exploit or start building our exploit rather. So here we go. We got this loaded and we'll go ahead and pull this over here. All right, so we'll just paste that in, okay? And we do need to fix the padding on all this. So shift in, shift tab, there we go. And we, you'll notice it automatically does it in Python 2, which we don't want, we want Python 3. We could do it in Python 2, but I don't really like using deprecated things that much. Although Python 2 does make this easier to run, okay? Because we could just take this and print P at the end, and then pretty much, you know, do a little parentheses thing, do, you know, run the exploit, and then semicolon cat, and then pipe that into the server, and that'll give us a shell that way. But it, it's not as clean. So 
let's use our pwn tools which will actually give us a little dollar sign when we pop a shell that way we know we have an interactive shell we can work with whereas with the way i just mentioned that won't do that so and let's go ahead and throw our padding in why don't we so it was a times 28 i believe yes because you know the overflow always comes first at least in this case so now we want to let's let's do a debug controller up here because we want to run it locally first and test it that way to see if it works before we run it on the server and we'll say if not debug then we'll do s equals remote and then we want the server of course so we want this part put that in we need that there and then a quote oops and another quote and then an in parenthesis and then else we just want to run our local process okay so that should be squared away now we want to get rid of that annoying home tools output so let's put this under with context quiet have that okay so now it's starting to look pretty good now since we're not using pat anymore or struct rather that class let's get rid of it and instead let's replace our pack function with our pwn tools p32 it does the same thing essentially that less than i just means put it in little indian so you can use that if you want to. Now, one thing we do need to do is make sure since this is Python 3, we have to put the B in front of all these because otherwise it won't work. It'll break since it's dealing with byte strings. In Python 2, it, it didn't matter, right? It ignored it, but in Python 3, we have to do that. So it's annoying, but it is what it is. So now we can just do s.sinline. We don't need to receive anything because we're not really, we don't really need to control that bit. So we'll just go ahead and send the payload as is, and then we'll say s.interactive, which if our shell worked, it'll pop a little dollar sign and we'll be able to interact with the shell that we popped. Okay, I think that's good. We should be able to start running it. Okay, so we'll just let's say, we do need to change the permissions on it so that it can actually execute and we'll run slash exploit okay so we got a little interactive shell let's see if we can ls we can all right why don't we go ahead and try this out on the server do i still have it pasted though whoops oh i don't need to paste it sorry we just need to change our debug flag to zero save that and then we should just be able to run it again and see what happens it may take a few seconds All right, looks like we did indeed pop a shell, hopefully. Let's do ls, there we go. See, this is on the server now. So we'll do cat flag.txt, oh, no tab complete. So I'll have to type it out. And there's our flag, pico ctf snatch the shell. All right, so if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.